It's the end of July in South Florida. It's the middle of the afternoon, which means it's hot, it's sweaty, and Thomas Heaton, this here, this is all your fault. Many years ago, back in the film days, I shot a couple rolls of infrared film. And I kind of enjoyed it, but for whatever reason, I put it down. In the last few weeks, I've noticed that Thomas Heaton's been delving into infrared photography. And so I went out and bought a Hoya 72 filter to see if it eh, might suit me again. I don't want to go out and spend the money on converting a camera or anything like that until I have a better idea if I really want to start doing this again or not. So that's what I'm out doing. That's why I'm in the middle of the day. And it makes perfect sense because in the middle of summer in Florida, what do you get? Blue skies. Puffy white clouds. Perfect for infrared. So let's see if I can find a nice composition and... Obviously, I'm new to this. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, let's find out. I've got my first composition. It's not a prize winner, but the reason why I'm picking it is because of the green tree, green foliage. I've got the cloud above. And I know I'm going to have to do a little bit of a long exposure. So let's see what we can get. After just two exposures, I can see why people convert their cameras rather than use these filters. When you're using the filter, the exposure time is much longer. Uh, I'm up at 30 and 60 seconds, even in bright sunlight. I'm sure someone better than me who understands it better can explain why, but I know there's a, uh, a filter that's on the camera that blocks certain light. And so when they remove that and put the uh, infrared filter on it, it reduces your exposure times almost to normal exposure times from what I understand. But I can already see how if you want a faster shutter speed, it's difficult with these with the uh, Hoyer, sorry, the Hoya filter. Well, yesterday was okay. I didn't get any great compositions, but it was certainly a learning experience with infrared for the first time. So I've decided to come up here to the beach, see what we can do. It's the next day. Uh, I already went and scouted at the beach. It's still full of seaweed. If you watch some of my earlier videos, we've just had a horrendous amount of seaweed this year. And there's only about four or five people even on the beach because the seaweed's all dying. It kind of smells. It's just not not really a good time to be hitting our beach but it's a bright blue sky a couple clouds not too many so it could work well for infrared so I'm gonna try a couple of compositions there's been a dead tree limb that's been sitting on the beach for a while now that I've always wanted to photograph it might work well with infrared so I'm gonna give that a try I'll let you know how that works. Sorry, I don't have my other mic, so it's kind of windy. Of course, as soon as I say there's no one on the beach, I go get my tripod, come back, and all of a sudden there's just carloads of people pulling up with kids, jumping in the water and all. There's probably 50 people here within 10 minutes. And I came right after lunch, so what are you going to do? I tried to get a shot of that log, but again, of course, people are sitting right next to it. I shot off a couple before they got here, but I didn't really get time to line it up the way I wanted to before they all showed up. One guy even looked at me, knew exactly what I was doing, and just sat right there. Typical. Probably Canadian. Anyway, um, I shot a few down here. I decided to try and, instead of making the seaweed a, a hindrance, shot a couple photos of the hindrance, uh, the hindrance, the seaweed, just to see what I could get. Tide's starting to come in now. It's 
moving it. So anyway, I'll let you know what I get. I'm back in the car. Yeah, I had to get in the car and turn the air conditioner on. I just spent close to two hours bouncing around the beach in Intercoastal. It's bloody hot. It's got to be, you know, the feel-like temperature of close to 100. So, I guess the bottom line is, if you're really going to devote time to infrared, then I could see where it's worth converting a camera, just mostly because of the shutter speeds. I ended up having to use shutter speeds out here at anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds, depending on the uh, composition. And if you could knock that down to, you know, normal times of 1 250, 1 one twenty fifth, one whatever, whatever the case may be, uh, I, I could see where that would be advantageous. If you're shooting static landscapes and you can stand there for a few minutes and you're not going to use infrared a whole lot, then this filter would work just fine. But if you're really going to get serious about it, I could see that's why people convert their cameras. And the other thing is, which I, I don't know, you can leave a comment if you do know, is some of these lenses have what's called hot spots in the middle. And if you have a converted camera, I don't know whether that helps eliminate some of those hot spots on these lenses or not. That could play a part in it as well. So anyway, hopefully I got a couple images. If I did, you'll see them right now. And until next time, take good care of yourself.